Aloha, aloha, aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul. Connecting with you today, it's a Tuesday, it's April 3rd. And it's about noontime when I'm turning this live stream on. Some of you might have come today at 9 a.m. my time, which is three hours ago, because that's what I posted last night when I went to bed. Not thinking with all my head necessarily. Um, but this is when I actually start on Tuesdays. So thank you for taking the time for adjusting your schedule to join me or just happen to be tuning in. I'm very happy that you're here. Um, I, was, I have to say I was kind of uh, surprised when I looked at the date today. <clears throat> it said April 3rd. And I said, wow, whatever happened to April 1st, April Fool's Day? It went by that fast that I was actually <laughs> in a place where I didn't even notice it. And no one played an April Fool's joke on me. So what do you do, right? So I didn't even realize we were all the way into the third day of April. That's how busy my life has been. But very happy to have you all joining me today. <clears throat> because I did post for three hours ago. Hopefully we'll have a, a large crowd. Hard to say, actually. But Facebook does a pretty good job gathering some souls. So welcome, everybody. It's been a very busy morning for me. I did already two teachings this morning. And I answered about uh, 40 texts. And uh, actually, no emails yet. I haven't even gotten to those. Uh, but it's been a, a really, really busy morning. One of those things that happen when uh, you have some responsibilities. But then I talked to some moms that were stayed up all night last night dealing with their kids at every hour of the night. So I don't have that to deal with. So welcome, everybody. Let's see who's joining in and checking in with us today. <clears throat> welcome, Kathy Arnold. Aloha, Cynthia Marie. Welcome also to Maria Joy. Welcome, Daniel Hansen, Stastimbo, and Shirley Schuster. Aloha, Kristen Rojas. Jim, welcome, Lisa Carter. Aloha, Sherry Hines. Welcome, Phil. Welcome also to Marie, um, Maria Joy. I might have mentioned your name already. Welcome, Johanna Steer and Julia Abbott. Welcome, Delma Moore, Montes. Excuse me. Welcome, Larissa and Don Robinson. Aloha, Michelle Fitzmaurice. Welcome to uh, Linda Iloba and Ben Garzosa. Thank you all for taking the time out of your day to join me today. I know that this schedule might be easier for some and more difficult for others. I think it just depends on where you're at in the globe. Um, welcome also to Angela Diacomo. So today's title, for those who are not sure what we're doing today, Maintaining Balance in the Midst of Chaos. So that should probably impact a few people. Most of us have varying levels of chaos in our life. Um, and sometimes it can be difficult to maintain balance. So I'll be sharing with you today some of the uh, guidance and some of the wisdom that Master Shaw has brought to us that can be applied to our everyday life. And hopefully it can assist us. There are certainly many different kinds of chaos. There is family-based chaos. There is job-based chaos, financial chaos, relationship chaos. And for a good chunk of us, all of the above. And it can get a bit overwhelming sometimes. <clears throat> you know, we, we all uh, need that personal time. And sometimes it's almost impossible to get that. And that, in essence, disallows us from unwinding, coming down off the, off the um, constant demand of our time, so to speak. And so uh, I look forward to giving you some guidance uh, I do um, private readings, Tasha, but I'm not doing any readings today. Um, welcome, Craig Beam. And welcome also, Kate Nicole. Welcome uh, to anyone else whose name I might have missed. Thank you all for coming. <coughs> <coughs> so, if that subject matter, maintaining balance in the midst of chaos, um, works for you, if that aligns, I hope you can stick around. I'm going to go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul, invite in beings of light, and then we will go ahead and move forward with today's wisdom teachings and blessings. So let's place our hands in the soul light, soul service hand position. We drop the left hand in front of our heart center. The right hand remains pointed towards heaven. <coughs> Close our eyes. And welcome, um, Bilas. Welcome also, Jennifer Cress Smith. 
Let us begin. Dear all layers of the divine, the Tao, the source, our beloved creator, all the beings of light serving the planet of the light side, including beloved Jesus and Mother Mary, Buddha, Amitofu, beloved Kuan Yin, Angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, and ascendant masters, gurus, lamas, sifu, saints, kahunas, beloved mother earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, planets, galaxies, and universes. We love you, honor you, deeply appreciate you. And we ask for your presence today to assist <clears throat> with the guidance, teachings, and wisdom for the subject matter, maintaining balance in the midst of chaos. We're very grateful for the opportunity to receive your wisdom and to be able to apply it in our everyday lives. We thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes, we love you, we honor you, respect you. We ask you to please come and we invite all souls in all universes to turn on their song of love, peace, and harmony to chant with us. We are extremely grateful. Thank you. So let us chant one round of love, peace, and harmony so that we can connect heart to heart, soul to soul, leave the day behind or prepare for our day, whatever it may be, <coughs> and connect our energies. Let us begin. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, 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 Li. La lu la li lu la lu la ha li lu la lu la ha li lu la wo ai wo xian er ling wo ai ran ran lei wang li I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We have absolutely been joined by many, many, many souls. <clears throat> it's amazing how many souls come when you chant that song. I'm always shocked. Uh, so welcome also to uh, Craig Beam. Welcome Christine uh, Christine Mara. Welcome also to Vilas. Welcome Jennifer Cress Smith. Aloha. Heather McNee. Carla uh, Digraguileres. Digraguileres. And welcome Renee. Welcome also to Vanessa and Missy Dodd. Bozena. Aloha. Welcome Sharon Dodd, welcome Kathleen Muhan and Ali Fess. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for hitting on that share button. So today, maintaining balance in the midst of chaos. How many of you have experienced chaos? Show of hands, show of happy or sad faces. How many of you have experienced significant chaos in your life? Yeah, starting to uh, yep, starting to see quite a few little uh, icons there. How many of you are in the midst of chaos right now in your life? Yeah, most of us have some variations of chaos. So there are seven slices of pie, if you will, in life. You talk to different people; they'll come up with different ones. And we have the major ones, which is our work life. We have our personal self time. We have our family life, which is those closest to us. 
We have our um, recreational life, you know, what we do outdoor with others, friends. We also have our spiritual life. Some of us have chaos in our spiritual life. We have our physical health and wellness, our emotional health and wellness. We even have our mental health and wellness. And all of these slices of life can have chaos in it. Has anybody ever had mental chaos? They don't know what to do. They're completely befuddled. They're just like, ah, they just want to shut down. Mental chaos. What about emotional chaos? Overwhelm, too many things uh, bringing too much emotions, too much grief, too much fear. Uh, too many conditions. Uh, some people have significant blockages related to anxiety. Okay, these are also chaotic emotions. They they create a shutdown environment for a lot of people. They just want to go and run in a corner and hide, not be in anybody's presence. What about physical chaos? Anybody have any physical chaos in their life where it's just a constancy of something happening, always tripping over something, stubbing toes, cutting their fingers, whole body in pain? Uh, there's not one thing, it's the next. First you get rid of this dilemma and then you have another dilemma. Okay, A lot of us have emotional chaos. What about relationship chaos? Who, who has those, right? Chaos in our relationships. And we're talking about, you know, husband, wife, spouse. Okay? This is a relationship chaos. Some of us are like, it's a constant battle. You can never do whatever, you know, whatever you do, it's never right. Um, can't ever make them happy enough. Or it's, it's a constant up and down. One day it's, it's great and the next day it's, it's like a bipolar relationship. Relationship chaos. Okay? What about family chaos, right? Get up in the morning and from the moment you get up, the kids are running around. It's just one big chaotic mess. The kitchen is a disaster area. Just after the morning breakfast, you've got to prepare to go to work. You kiss the husband on the cheek on the way out the door. This kid's yelling at that kid. Food's getting thrown. Relationship chaos and family chaos can be very, very different. Um, yeah, thanks for sharing, Karen. And so these... So when I touch on how to bring balance in the midst of chaos, it's not just limited to one area of life, even spiritual chaos. Um, what can that look like? That can look like being lost on your spiritual journey, not being sure where to turn to, not being sure uh, what to believe. One day you're following this psychic over there, the next day you're following this tarot card reader over there, the next day uh, your friend tells you, oh, look, you know, a uh, piece of red landed in front of you. It's a sign, blah, blah, blah. And so you're just, you're constantly being torn away in all these different chaotic spiritual potentialities. Okay? That's not a path necessarily that is very advantageous towards your long term spiritual growth. So that's a form of spiritual chaos. We could have um, financial chaos. Everybody is familiar with that, right? At some point in their life. Uh, and financial chaos is not knowing what's next and constantly being in a place of concern and worry and fear and, and a lack of trust. Um, doesn't matter what you do, nothing seems to get ahead. And, and then sometimes when you think you're getting ahead, something comes and whacks you over the side of the head and, and you know, two steps forward, three steps backwards. Financial chaos, right? And so, and then some of us can say, I have all of these in my life, right? Who can say they have all of these in their life? Welcome, Prisca. Welcome, M.A. Uh, Dave, Regina David. I think used to be um, Madre, but welcome. Welcome, Seema. Welcome, Jennifer Maria. <coughs> and welcome, Carol Cook and Rosetta. And welcome also, Shelly Davis. Welcome, Nestor. Deborah Anderson. Welcome, Angela Byrne. Um, and welcome also to Petra Marie. And if I welcome Yvonne Spear. And if I missed your name, forgive me. <clears throat> and so welcome Leonard uh, Sousa and also to uh, anybody else I might have missed. So yeah, most of us have various levels of chaos in our life. Now, what I share is the wisdom and teachings that Master Shah has brought to humanity. And I work with a lot of the information in his books. He has over 21 books. So if anybody is not familiar with him, please do yourself a favor and pick up one of his books and check it out. Um, there's many to choose from. And some of the foundational teachings is that 
Um, all success and all failure in every aspect of life has the same root. All success and all failure in every aspect of life is rooted in karma. Karma is often think, thought of as bad. Not necessarily true. Good karma can actually bring chaos. Isn't that interesting? Good karma can bring you conditions in which you end up in a chaotic environment for the end result of bringing you to a whole new level that you never would have got to if you didn't have that chaotic environment to start with. How many people have hit rock bottom to find themselves in a much better position a few years later? And if it hadn't have been for that rock bottom, that massive chaotic condition, they would not have been in a better place those few years later. Sometimes good karma can bring what appears on the surface to be unpleasant conditions. <clears throat> Sometimes our soul brings conditions to us that we, uh, we don't realize is beneficial to us. Sometimes our soul will block us to keep us from making more bad choices. Uh, we think, you know, our mind says, go this direction. Our soul will block us because it knows that's not the right direction. And so we have chaos in our life. We're wondering, why is nothing working out? I keep trying to go this direction. Nothing is working out because our soul is trying to steer us. So in Master Shah's wisdom, he brings to us some foundational teachings that the root of all success and all failure in life is karma. Good karma, not so good karma. And yet, what it really boils down to is, how do we deal with it when it's present in our life? How do we deal with the chaos of the family environment in the morning? How do we deal with the ongoing daily financial crunch? How do we deal with the various ways it shows up in our life? In order to maintain balance, in order to keep balance, it requires disconnect. Unfortunately, sometimes that disconnect comes in the form of ah or yelling very loud at everybody. That's not really disconnect. That's just forcing everybody to leave you alone while you yell and maintain control. Welcome, Mabenti. Welcome also, Shelly. <clears throat> disconnect that I'm referring to is aligning to your soul. In order to maintain balance in these seven or so different areas of our life that can be ridiculously, ridiculously painful sometimes, we must take time to ourselves and for a lot of us when we try to do that <laughs> when we try to do that we find ourselves find it very difficult let's say you get a half hour to yourself or an hour to yourself and what do you do during that hour to yourself the monkey mind what about this what about that da -da 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 -da. I'm hearing this noise right so even just trying to be by yourself the chaos continues. So how do you put the brakes on that? One of the things that will serve you best is trying to meditate. Now, I know because I've been in these roles that I'm telling you about, and I've been in the role where the monkey mind's going off 100% of the time, how difficult it is to get into a relaxed place. But I first want to talk to you about why that's important. Because if you can truly buy into the why, then you can make some significant shift in your life. The why it's important is because it reconnects you to that which you were born from. You were born from the original soul, the original creator. You were like a child in the womb. <clears throat> you came into this life, you have your parents, you have your religious systems, you have your brothers, your sisters, you have all of these structures that taught you how to be, do, act, and think your whole life. And now you're at where you're at today with chaos here. This, this area of life's okay. This area of life's okay. This area of life's okay. Oh, more chaos over here. So we have two or three, maybe four of these seven pieces of pie that end up in a significant amount of chaos. Might be health, might be finances, could be relationship, could be family, could be our mental, emotional body. Okay, But invariably, we end up with one, two, three, or four of these that are kind of out of whack. Any of these areas that are out of whack 
are basically like big green lights that say, this is where we need to resolve and fix things. How do we resolve and fix them? Well, you've been dealing with it for six, seven, five, ten, twenty years now. The same way, same way, same way. How's that doing for you? Are you still in chaos with it? Probably hasn't been working for you too well. When we take the time to sit down and quiet ourselves, what in essence are we doing? We are hitting the stop button. We are hitting the red light. When you do that, you are literally allowing yourself to stand in the stream of the frequency of your creator. When we're running around like crazy, putting out these problems and dealing with anxiety, dealing with this, dealing with that, da, 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 financial this, financial that, emotional this, emotional that, kid this, family that, relationship this. When we are stuck in the chaos condition, we are not in the stream of the divine. Aloha, Don. Aloha uh, to uh, anyone else I might not have seen. Welcome. And so why is it important to pause a half hour to an hour every day for ourselves? And welcome, Bonnie Dunn. Because it, uh, it is literally like plugging in your cell phone. Okay? How many of us run around with our cell phone until it literally dies? And then we, oh, 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 sorry, I can't keep this call going. And then we literally have to stop. We have no choice. Okay? Probably half of us. Now, I'm one of the people that keeps my, my phone plugged in wherever I go. Half of you maybe do that. The other half probably keep it unplugged. My point is, when we stay plugged in to our source creator, by giving our source creator our soul, our physical, emotional, mental, spiritual bodies, a time to recharge, to reconnect, we can reverse the chaotic conditions in our life. Now, it doesn't seem like you can reverse chaotic conditions when you're in this space. Some of us, we go into that private, quiet space, and the mind's still going at 100 miles an hour. We'll get there. I'll give you some guidance. But when we take the time to do this consistently, at least 30 minutes every day. What in essence we are doing is we are, we are literally realigning ourselves to our source. When we are in these chaos conditions, we are as far from alignment from source as possible. Chaos is not natural. Chaos is disalignment from source, unless you happen to be in a condition where your soul or a certain set of conditions have been brought to you by your karma to create a shift in your world that has to be created. And even that, if you were in a meditative position and a relaxed half hour a day time off for yourself, you would be able to see, oh, maybe these conditions were brought to me so that I could learn the lesson, move on from it. Almost everything that is chaotic in our life can be dealt with dramatically differently. <clears throat> You look at uh, Gandhi, you know, a great, great, great being. He decided not to deal with the violence and the oppression in the country of India by England towards India. He decided not to deal with it with, with uh, fighting back and being just as oppressive. He decided to deal with it with peacefulness. He changed his mind about the approach. Everybody else had their approach and it wasn't working. Everybody else fights back. We fight back against the system. When we control ourselves, connect to our source, connect to our soul, even if it's just a half hour every day, that plugging in realigns us to why we were here. That plugging in, we start to hear the message from our soul, from our heaven's team, guides, angels, and saints. That plugging in, literally in that moment, starts to dissolve the chaos condition. I will repeat, when we take about a half hour every day to just let everything else go and plug in, connect to source, connect to soul, connect to creator, we are literally unwinding the chaos in our life. How is this possible? Because in that half hour or so, we might only literally have five minutes of pure bliss. 
I would bet that 95% of us will only get five minutes of pure bliss or pure quietude in that half hour. Five minutes. The other 25 is just trying to get to that quiet space. But did you know that that five minutes, in that five minutes, miracles can happen? How is this possible? How can a miracle happen in that five minute slot of quietude? Because in that five minute slot, heaven and earth, our beloved creator, can literally bring us massive miracles in that period of time. They can bring us, download into us, this is your solution for this chaos. This is how you handle this chaos. This is how you resolve this financial dilemma over here. This is how you talk to the boss over here. You can receive in that five minutes, huge, huge things. And you might not even be aware of it. You might have just been in a place where you thought you nodded off, right? Oh, I, I slept, okay? No, if you pay attention, you just, you were just gone. You're just literally mentally gone. How many of you have been in that place where you're in a, in a little meditative space and you're busy, 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 and all of a sudden you're just gone? Five minutes, 10 minutes, maybe it was only one minute. In that place where you go into what's called the hundun, uh, Master Shah's teaching refers to it as the hundun, you are literally downloaded from heaven and your soul massive, massive, massive quantities of information. Massive blessings are given to you during that time when you're completely disconnected from this physical chaos that we find ourselves in. And it's in that one minute, two minute, five minute of disconnect where your miracles can start to occur. You might not be aware of that download. You might not be aware of that information that came in, that uh, you know, a book from heaven came in on how to solve this. A scroll was deposited into your Akashic record how to solve that. Okay, new wisdom to be released to you. But when you go to work that next day and that person comes at you sideways and tries to say gossipy things about you and you look at them and you say, please forgive me. I'm sorry for whatever I may have done to you. And they're just like, whoa, where'd that come from, right? You might not have known where that came from to say that. You, you probably would have responded quite differently had you not had that previous day in which you had that gap of time in which heaven reconnected to your heart. When we take time to connect to our soul, when we take time to connect to heaven for that little time every day, not asking for anything, not begging for anything, we do that too much. We just need to be the receiver. It has been said, and I believe, that when we ask for something that is instantly given, some people agree with that, some people are like, really? I asked for a million dollars, I didn't instantly get it. Well, from the perspective of creation and manifestation, when we ask, it is instantly given. Then what keeps it from coming to us if it's so instantly given? Why is my chaos still here? Why is my financial problems still here? Why is my relationship problem still here? It is instantly given. What keeps it from coming into manifestation is our remaining in the chaos, our inability to be in a place of allowing. When we are not in a place of allowing of heaven's love, our soul's love, of the blessings we request, when we are not in a place of allowing and receiving, we are in a place of chaos. It's that simple. So it is the consistency that makes such a huge difference. Now, in that half hour of time, let's imagine that you said, okay, I'm going to give myself this half hour of time. I'm going to test this out. Let's see if it makes a difference in the chaos in my life. Okay. Maybe you're one of those that wants to venture out and try something new. Okay. I've tried this meditation thing before. I've tried this relaxing thing before. It doesn't work for me. I'm one of those people it never works for. Right. Some of you are probably saying that. Some of you maybe have tried it. What does matter is what you do during this time. It is very, very relevant. The lyrics is right on it. <clears throat> when you are in the place of quieted, quietude, you have the choice of what your mind is doing. For most of us, when we go into a meditative place, a quiet place, the mind just sits there and controls us. It just swings us over here and brings us over here and makes us think of this and then that, and we go all over the place, and our mind is still in chaos. Who is the boss? Your soul is the boss. The soul leads the heart. The heart leads the mind. The mind then directs the energy and the energy adjusts the matter. This is the nature of soul, heart, mind, energy, matter.
Okay? This is Master Shah's wisdom teachings. And he says, control the soul first. Don't control the soul first. Attune to the soul first. When you align to the soul, you are aligned to source and creator, because soul is one with course and creator. Then you can make heart-based choices. The heart then leads the mind. Most of us are stuck in our mind, hence the chaos that shows up in our world. The chaos that shows up in our world is the result of multiple conditions, which include, of course, our karmic conditions, that which we have allowed to enter our life. We look at it every day, every day, every day, so we don't think it's changeable because we don't apply these simple conscious choices towards it. Now, well, it's not going to reverse overnight. Consistency is the key. Bring ourselves to this half hour place. Choose what your mind focuses on. Okay? And Erica, uh, excuse me, um, Larissa said it correctly. We start with focusing on gratitude. This is a very simple formula. It truly is. Because if you can bring yourself to a quiet place and tell your mind to focus on gratitude, well, what am I going to be grateful for? Okay? Well, Open your eyes for a moment. Look around the room. Are you inside a covered place or are you outside in the elements? That's one thing to be grateful for. Are you sitting on a chair or on a cold ground? That's another thing to be grateful for. Is your stomach full or are you hungry? That's another thing to be grateful for. You do not have to work hard to find gratitude, but you maybe think you do because your mind has convinced you of that. When you control your mind, and you start placing your, your mind in the place of gratitude. What are you doing? You are literally unwinding the chaos in your world. Well, how is this possible? I'm only there a half hour. I'm thinking about gratitude things for sitting in a chair instead of on the floor. I have a roof over my head. How is that going to change my chaos? Gratitude carries an energy, a frequency that aligns your heart to your soul. It aligns your soul to heaven. It aligns you to the original love that we all come from. Gratitude says, I am grateful for all that I have. It is opposite of the monkey mind saying, oh, complain this, oh, complain that. That is not, not creating a good future for you guys. We are little creators. Heaven imbued us, infused all of us with the ability to create. What do we create? We create what we focus upon and our karma. Okay, our karma creates the conditions. We continue that manifestation with what we focus on. If we take the time to be in that meditative space, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, and control the monkey mind by using it, being in gratitude, then we can move into the place of quietude. From gratitude, we can move into quietude because we're controlling the mind. See the difference? Now, also, we want to use our visualization. We want to visualize. When you are grateful, offer your gratitude to the source, to your soul, to God, to Tao, to Buddha, to Jesus, whoever you believe in. Offer your gratitude to them for coming every time you call them. Offer your gratitude for all that you do have. If your chaos is in finances, offer your gratitude for what you have in the financial arena. Do you think that that will bring a positive manifestation moving forward? Of course. If you're in a difficult, troubling relationship, offer gratitude for all of the positive characteristics of the person in that relationship. It seems like it's the antithesis. It is. How has it worked for you before? Complaining about the relationship, has that benefited you? Has that done anything for your relationship? That's why it's in chaos. How do we find balance in the midst of chaos? We stop the wheel. Stop the wheel. Consciously take control of your mind and move it in the direction you want to, starting with gratitude. Then you move into manifesting what you would like. You use your mind for that. When you're thinking of grateful things, offer your gratitude to others, to all of these things that in your life have chaos in them. Find the silver lining, so to speak. For in this gap of time, in this time when you're choosing to do this for yourself, you are literally creating a better future. You are unwinding the chaos because of a purposeful, 
conscious realignment to your soul, a purposeful conscious realignment. You are definitely, I, all of us, are definitely not aligned to our soul when we are fighting it with these other chaotic conditions. We are in denial of the karmic conditions and our own um, constant focus on it that is bringing it back to us. It is our constant focus on the negative that constantly brings us back to us. It truly is that simple. So if you are consistent with this half hour every day, consistent, 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 okay? Try it. What have you got to lose? Well, chaos, all the other problems in my life, yeah. If you want to lose those, I would suggest trying this. Give yourself a dedicated time every day. Put it on your calendar. Don't let anybody interrupt it. It doesn't matter if it's the kids, the parents, the spouse. You put your hand up and you say, nope, not going to interrupt me. This is my time, my life. This is my time to rejuvenate. This is my time to plug in the cord to my battery cell and take care of myself. You can even expand it past a half hour if you can. You can do it dedicated time 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes at night. The key is consistency because when you do, you start to receive a frequency that you have not been able to receive in a while. And in the receiving of that, you will start getting messages from your soul, messages from heaven. Don't go there. This is good. Do more of this. The messages will be clearer. When you start getting clearer messages, you avoid other chaotic conditions. It is when we stay in the chaos and we just run around the wheel of time and we don't stop that wheel that we can't hear our soul saying, no, don't go there. Heaven is saying, don't do it. And we're busy going, no, 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 because we're in the chaos. When we stop, when we attune, we start to hear it easier. You guys remember the AM FM dials, right? And then you get the right one, and you can hear it very clear. Cool. <clears throat> we are like these AM FM dials running around. And the heaven is talking to us just like a clear station. Our soul is talking to us just like a clear station. And we're running right by it because we're turning the dial too fast. We're not slowing down. You just keep hearing. And you think that this is your life. Adjust the dial by slowing down your time clock. Stop and once every day. In doing so, you'll start to attune to that frequency of your heaven and soul. You'll start to hear it. Then, this is the beautiful thing, <clears throat> then as you move through life, in these somewhat chaotic times, no matter how it comes to us, because your ear is attuned to your soul in heaven, because every day you've been taking the time to do that, you'll be in the middle of a chaotic condition with the family, the relationship, the finances, or job, or whatever it is, and you'll hear, do this do that and you go oh okay and you go do this you go do that and whoosh everything smooths out it can be that simple our soul does not want us to suffer guys do you think heaven and our soul wants us to suffer no of course not our soul wants us to be happy heaven wants us to be happy nobody wants the suffering heaven doesn't we don't nobody doesn't but we run around that wheel and we, we, we fail to take the time to get off. If we take the time to realign, we can make a huge difference in our life. So let's do that now. And I'll give you some guidance on how to do this. Everybody, where you're at, sit up straight. Back away from the back of the chair. If you prefer lotus position, do that. Whatever is comfortable for you. <clears throat> the reason the back away is back away from the back of the chair, unless your back is sore, is because it allows the chi to flow. Close your eyes, bring your thoughts and your mind and your breath into your lower abdomen. Pay attention to what I'm doing. I am leading you, I am leading your mind. You can do the same things. Bring your thoughts and your mind and your breath into your lower abdomen. Inside your lower abdomen, see that there is a bright light some of you may have difficulty visualizing. In that case, see a golden light ball right in front of your face, right in front of your mouth. See that golden light ball. 
put it inside your mouth. Now you see it inside your mouth, this golden ball, it's pretty big. And it can change shape, no problem. It can become very small. And so swallow it down. Watch that golden light ball as it swallows down your throat, all the way down the center of your body, down into your lower abdomen. And then poof, it expands right in your lower abdomen. There it is. Big golden ball, the entire size of your lower abdomen. That's how easy it is to visualize. Start with it outside and then bring it in. So I'm leading your mind. You do this for yourself when you need to take this time to reconnect. So visualize this golden ball in your lower abdomen. <clears throat> and then we connect. Take a deep breath in. Release everything from the day. Just push it all out like you were pushing out all the anxiety, all the fear, all the stress. Just push it out. Another deep breath in. Push it out. All the way out. Come on, push it out. Another deep breath in. Ah, nice. Keep noticing the golden ball in your lower abdomen. Notice your monkey mind is not controlling you because you're telling it what to do. And now we're going to offer gratitude. Let's start with offering our gratitude to our beloved creator. So God, creator, is like as big as the whole universe. Whatever you perceive God to be, send your love. Literally crack open your physical heart, open your, your heart, grab with your hands, open your heart up to God. Thank you, God. Thank you, my beloved creator. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Send your love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And some of you are going, why? My life sucks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Send your love. Thank you for giving me the chance to be here, to have all these experiences. Thank you for my beloved children. Thank you for the parents, especially the ones that I really like. Thank you for my brother and sister. Thank you. Send God your love. Gratitude. What can you thank God for? Thank you for my breath. Thank you for this abilities that I have to see, to see your beautiful flowers. What else can you be grateful for? Tell God your gratitude right now. Don't let me lead you. I want you to lead yourself. Thank you, God. You're doing this while the golden ball in your lower abdomen is still spinning. You're offering God your gratitude. Send God your love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now God is sending love back to you 100 Fold. It's flying back to you. It's clearing blockages in your path. It's clearing chaos. The bigger the love you send God, the bigger the love you get back. Send your love. Now, each every one of you, think of one area of your life where you have chaos. Finances, relationship, family, business, emotional body, mental body, physical body. Where do you have the most chaos? Okay? Isolate one only. Okay, now I want you to think of anything, anything at all, positive about it. Okay? Thank you. If it's finances, thank you. I have enough to pay my bills this week. Thank you. I have food in my refrigerator. Thank you for the financial blessings for that. If it's emotions, thank you for the opportunity to more fully understand why I have these unpleasant emotions. I know that there is an opportunity to heal here. I am grateful. If it's physical body, thank you for the reminder of this physical pain. I recognize that my karma may have reminded me that I have harmed others. You are serving me by giving me the opportunity to ask forgiveness for bringing this same kind of pain to others. I truly apologize to all the souls. I thank you for your service of reminding me. Thank you for the opportunity to become healthy once again. Everything we can offer gratitude to. What about 
uh, the spouse that is very mean and ugly towards us, right? Thank you to this beautiful spouse. Thank you for reminding me. I may have been mean and ugly to you. I do not wish to be on the receiving end anymore. I do not wish to be one who has caused this upon anybody. And if I have caused it upon you, I offer you, I ask your unconditional forgiveness. I offer you forgiveness. Thank you for bringing this opportunity for permanently clearing this karma from our life. Everything can have gratitude about it. Thank you for this breath. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my beautiful children. Thank you for the ears to hear them screaming at each other. For if I did not hear them screaming at each other, I would not be able to come to their rescue when that scream is really important. Thank you for the ability to hear. We can turn everything into a positive. Focus. And now choose a being of light that you love. Could be Jesus, could be Amitofu, could be Kuan Yin, could be Archangel Michael. Choose a being of light. Offer your gratitude to that being of light. Thank you. Thank you for being there for me. Receive their love and light. You are sending it. They are sending it back to you. Receive the love and the light. Tell them what you are grateful for. Maybe they've protected you and you're unaware. Thank you. Now let us thank our own soul. Our soul lives forever. We do not. Let us offer our soul our gratitude for being with us all this life, for trying to guide us. Thank you, my beloved soul. Please continue to bless my awakening. I am so grateful for the little insights and intuitions you give to me. I am so grateful for all of the times that you have protected me and guided me to make the right choices. Thank you for those times when you have blocked my bad choices. I might have complained in those times, but I recognize that the result was good. Thank you. Dear my soul, please forgive me for making mistakes on this journey that cause us to suffer longer. Thank you. And now, let us just focus on the golden light ball in our lower abdomen. Visualize inside this golden light ball in our lower abdomen. Visualize Mother Earth. See the beautiful blue-green sphere with the beautiful water and the clouds, the mountain ranges and the land, just spinning very gently inside our abdomen. So beautiful. Thank you, Mother Earth. Thank you for your love. You give us oxygen. Without you, I would not be alive. Thank you to the beautiful trees, the bushes, the plants, and the flowers. Such incredible beauty. You provide shade, color, fragrance. You provide such beautiful, unconditional service. I'm so grateful for you. The water. Sip some of the pure water from a waterfall, from a pure glacier. Drink some of the crystalline water. Watch it go through your whole body, healing you, rejuvenating you. Thank you, Mother Earth, for this pure water that you give us. Without your water, I would not be here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
And in this place of gratitude, bring yourself inside your lower abdomen in a meditative position. See yourself sitting in lotus position in the golden ball inside your lower abdomen. Nice and quiet. Watch your breath. And ask, dear my soul, can you please give me a loving message? And receive that loving message. Trust that message. That was not your mind. We left your mind behind 20 minutes ago. That was your soul. And then ask your soul, dear my beloved soul, could you please continue to talk to me, continue to guide me when I don't want to do these meditations continue to help me to realign to you and to my creator so that I can release all the chaos in my life and then you send your love to your soul thank you I love you thank you I love you Send your love to your soul, to your creator, to all of the souls on your heaven's team, all the angels, all the beings of light. Send your love. And when you are ready, open your eyes. And if you would like, you can share the message, the loving message you received from your soul. So this is an example of a very simple, this is what, maybe only 10 minute meditation. I'd like to know how many of you were able to easily go into that because you were guided into it, right? How many of you, your monkey mind was still busy or was, were you easily able to let go of the monkey mind? When we do this for ourselves, and I want to read your coast, I want to read what your experience was. When we do this for ourselves, what are we doing? We are allowing ourselves to align to that which we truly are. We are not the chaos. The chaos is the result of our karma. It is a result of our constant manifestation of those things we're placing our negative focus upon. When we take the time to be consistent with a practice just like this, control the mind purposely, using gratitude and then move you see how I moved you as an example into a place where you brought your soul into your lower abdomen and then you connected to heaven that is where you can go if you have a nice music playing you can easily go into that two three four five minute uh, gone where you're just gone and it is in that time when you're gone that you can have significant benefit and realignment to your soul that little gap of time is where your chaos can start to disappear. <clears throat> Wonderful. I'm enjoying reading your comments. Thank you so much. Some people indicating they're having some difficulty with the monkey mind. Okay. That means you need to do more of this. Yes. Somebody says, so grateful. Very funny. Because that's what we're talking about. Grateful. Yeah. <clears throat> so... In conclusion, chaos is a result of not stopping the clock of time. 
the clock of time started when we came into this incarnation and our positive and negative karma started that clock started the conditions of the parents the peers the, the church the religion the, uh, the the teachers all of our experiences up until now have been because of the clock of time and our karma and the consistency of what we focus on since we are little creators when we consciously choose to stop that clock of time and realign to that which we are from our soul and our creator and we choose to be in a place of uh, positive gratitude what you are nests doing is stopping that consistent negativity you will find yourself if you're consistent with this and the, during the days finding things to be grateful for instead of negative and this will change the manifestation this will uh, with time reverse the karmic conditions it will unwind the chaos the more you take time to do this the better the results so the title to this live stream was how to bring balance to chaotic times it can be as simple as this explanation <clears throat> so I'm very grateful to see the comments as with everything the the wisdom the master Shah brings to us it's only as beneficial as the application of it I'd love to see you all applying this and becoming chaos free and the world would be very happy for that as well because we are interconnected one less chaotic being in our in in the world's life is a massive blessing for all okay so thank you thank you thank you for the opportunity to serve you I will be uh, back on Thursday uh, three hours earlier than the start time today and I have no idea what subject I'm going to cover at that time but I'll try to pre post so I'm so grateful for your presence if you're new and you just came in I encourage you to go back to the beginning and watch and um, also please share thank you thank you thank you love you love you love you to all the beings of light respectfully return gong song gong song gong song thank you everybody love you everybody bye bye it starts uh, Thursday 9 a.m. Hawaii time and on my Facebook page it shows you the times Tuesdays and Thursdays you can see it there in different time zones all right bye bye everybody